Hello everyone, my name is Jose Oscar Salinas with UCJ. Today's video is about identifying the second beast kingdom that tries to deceive the saints in the book of Revelation 13. While many say these eight verses are one of the most challenging prophecies to understand, I say not if you parallel the book of Revelation with Daniel and church history and everything will come together. So I hope you give me a chance to explain and may God bless you with the understanding. In this slide, I'd like to share my presentation cover that represents the topic. And I hope you like it because it's a famous woodcut by Elbridge Durer from the 1500s. And this guy had an amazing imagination after reading this prophecy called The Revelation of St. John 12, The Sea Monster and the Beast with the Lamb's Horn. This is my presentation outline with seven things I will share. One, review the structure of the book of Revelation chapter 13 on how it refers to a two-branch Roman government system. Two, explain where the two beasts of Revelation derive from. Three, focus on the second beast, two-horned lamb. Four, show the difference between two horns. And five, compare, compare if the second beast started during church history or will it start in the last seven years as some teach. Six, while why is the imperial regalia of the Holy Roman Empire and church so important or symbolized? And seven, why is the second beast more dangerous than the first beast? And last, conclude, who is the second beast kingdom? In my first few slides, I'd like to show you a visual of the entire chapter 13 that talks about the first and second beast kingdom in which I discovered that John saw the revived Roman Empire two-branch government system from the book of Daniel that refers to the government and religion or state or church. It shows that 1 through 10, John saw Rome revived and united with his three allies according to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and 39, and Revelation 20, verse 9. And verse 11 through 18 shows he saw a second beast kingdom with two horns that does everything in the presence of the first beast. And while it takes minutes to read, I will skip reading the entire section and break it down because it's one of the most challenging prophecies to decipher unless you create short uh, phrases and compare it with church history and everything comes together. This slide, I will explain how I connected the two beasts from the book of Revelation back to the book of Daniel as a two-branch Roman government. Because if you read the book of Daniel or checked out my previous video, who was the first beast kingdom, I explained in my timeline chart that it warns us about the fourth Roman beast in, the, in five different ways. In chapter 2, 7, 8, 9, and 10 to 12. And nevertheless, starting in Daniel chapter 2, he describes a Babylonian king's dream that Babylon was chosen to rule the earth for a period as a man who exalts himself as God, which refers to a kingdom. And from reading the entire book, I noticed it was a monarchy government with two branches where the state controlled the church. Plus, all four religions throughout history shows that that the same pattern that they claim to be God or kings of the earth, commanding the priests or church to, co to cause people to turn from the, from the God of Israel and worship his image and accept its doctrine or be killed. And in this slide, I hope this painting helps from the Second Council of Nicaea as a visual to see on how the two beast kingdom relate as a two branch government system, state and church. This painting depicts on, depicts on what happened after the first 100 years of council meetings. Basically, the state decreed, according to Revelation 13, that no one could buy or sell unless they accept the mark of the beast or worship his image, which I will explain in details on coming soon videos. In this slide, I'm showing my fourth kingdom chart that helps us visualize the two branches, that the first and second beasts are powers of, the go of a government system. On the left side, I'm showing the first branch called the state, and on the right side, I'm showing the second branch that refers to the church. And in the center, I'm using the Holy Roman Empire 
two-headed eagle representing the two branches of the government system. While some teach that it's logical that the two heads represent the east and west of the Catholic Church, it's not because Revelation 13 predicted a two-branch government, plus Daniel, Daniel's book expressed it, and history shows it. From 325 to 753, called the Byzantine Empire, that the state of the Roman Empire commanded the church to cause the people to follow the Roman beast and make him an image, which I will clarify in my next video. Nevertheless, the book, the beast kingdoms battled over the control of the kingdom. Then it, it shows that from 753 to 1806, called the Holy Roman Empire, the Catholic Church mainly had control by commanding the state to kill those who would not accept the mark of the Catholic faith or, or implied ways that they could not buy or sell unless they accepted the mark of Rome. Below I will, I will um, show you seven differences between the two branch government system, hoping you will understand one of the most complicated chapters in the entire Bible. One, the fourth Rome beast, beast versus the false prophet lamb with two churches. Two, the revived Roman kingdom versus the Catholic church um, and ecumenical churches. Three, the, fourth, the four United Nations, also called the Northern Kingdoms, versus the head of the interfaith church. And four, the little horn that understands deception versus the woman, also called the church, who rides the beast kingdom. And five, temporal power versus spiritual power, which is what the Pope argued for a hundred, hundreds of years that the Catholic controls the state. And six shows it's, one, it's the one world government versus the one world church. And seven, the United Nations, European, uh, the European nations and NATO New World Order versus the Roman Catholic Church controls the state. And at the bottom of the slide, I'm showing a silhouette on how I saw the prophecy of Revelation play out during church history, because it says that the state commanded the church to make him an image and cause the world to worship it and accept this, his doctrine, but if they refused, they could not buy or sell. Now that I briefly explained the difference of between the two beasts, I will focus on the second beast with two horns, which horns can mean a kingdom, nation, powers, or a period. For example, this two-part layout shows that the, that the two horns can mean two periods during church history. One happened after the other by suggesting that verse 11 to 14 shows a deception period from 325 to 800 during the ecumenical councils because it looked like a lamb referring to a church plus church uh, chapter um, 220 warns us about a woman called Jezebel, meaning a church of Baal, which called herself a prophetess, a teacher, but it seduced the saints to turn away from God and worship idols. And the second part, verse 14 to 18, shows a forced period from 800 to 1806 during the Holy Roman Empire. It spoke like a dragon stating it killed those who would not accept the mark of Rome, meaning to her rules and doctrines. Or horns can mean powers by looking at this amazing painting depicting the ecumenical councils. It shows a visual of two branches or powers of the Roman government system. On top, I show the first beast representing the Roman Empire, Constantine I, who is sitting on in the center as, they sta as the state ruler. And below, I'm showing the second beast, which represents the two-horned church. And on the left side, I show the first horn equates to the power of the Catholic Christian churches. And on the right side is the second horn power of the ecumenical Christian churches, suggesting it can mean powers or two churches that do everything in the presence of the first beast kingdom. And below the state's feet, we see a saint who could not buy or sell unless they accepted the mark state's laws or worship the church images. Nevertheless, 
Horn can mean two periods during history or two churches, though I like to ask people who reviewed my videos on both beasts, please comment knowing this is a different approach from many Bible teachers, and unless you're a historian, because if you compare it with history, it makes logical sense. But I'm only but I'm open to suggestions in hope of confirming who the beast is so we could warn the people before they build the third temple. In this slide, I'd like to show you two paintings. On the left is Emperor Constantine I with two horned church from the First Council of Nicaea 325, holding the Niceno Constantinopolitan Creed of 381. Yet some might say it was a decree as they both are um, semantically related, especially in those days, you could not buy or sell unless you profess this creed. And on the right side, it shows a good example. If you disagreed with the Roman state or church, they burned your books and put you in exile or killed you. Now in these next few slides, let's plug in state and church in the main chapter to see if it sounds logical, starting with the first six details to explain who the he is throughout the entire chapter by using the literal meaning next to it. Because after I put the entire Bible in chronological order and compared it with church history, I discovered that John is explaining the Roman government's two-branch system from the book of Daniel. Starting with 1, verse 11 says that John saw another beast referring to the church being the second branch of the Roman kingdom coming up out of the earth. And 2, that the church had two horns like a lamb referring to the false prophet lamb uh, with the two-headed church. And 3, the church sp uh, spec like as a dragon deceived millions to trust the Roman state. And 4, the state, I mean, I'm sorry, the church exercised the power of the state and did everything in the presence. And five, to cause or referring to deceive, force many to worship or bathe the state, being the first branch, who deadly wound was healed and revived in 325. And six, the state does great wonders, deceives, kills many in the sight of men, referring to the church. Yet, i like to explain a few details. The two horn like a lamb and speak, uh, spoke like a dragon implies that it looked like a church, but deceives like a dragon that shows signs which refers to evil actions they had done during church history. And verse 14 says that the church shall deceive them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the queen of heaven to the Roman state, which was wounded by a sword and did live. 15 says, and the state and church caused many as would not worship the image of the queen of heaven of the Roman state or be killed. Nevertheless, in my coming slides, I will show you that all this started during the ecumenical councils from 325 to 431 AD. And verse 16 warn us that the church caused, referring to deceive and force, all to receive a mark in their right hand, meaning works, or in their forehead, meaning in their mind. And 17, that no man might buy or sell or trade according to how the United Nations is using this phrase during this period, unless he had the mark or of the laws and doctrines of the church and state, or the name of the Roman state, or the number of his name. And 18 says, Here is, the, here is wisdom. Let them that had understanding count the number of the state that rules the world. For it is the number of a man, 666, or some say it's the name of, of a man, which many confirm it's Roman. Nonetheless, in my coming soon book, I wrote all the cross-references to the entire te uh, text of Revelation. Plus, I will explain in my following few videos that the mark of the beast refers to the laws of the state and the doctrines of the church. And the works refer to the evidence 
if you're following the Roman church and state and the law versus the laws of God. That mostly refers to the Ten Commandments, in which many churches have stopped posting them at the entrance of their churches. In chapter 22, 12 says, Behold, I'm coming, my rewards is with me to give to everyone according to his works. And chapter 2, 26 says, He who overcomes this Roman beast, beast kingdom keeps my works until the end. I will have, I will have power, or he will have power over the nations. With this slide, I'd like to show you that the second beast refers to the false prophet. Because chapter 19, verse 19 says, I saw the beast, the kingdom of the earth, and their armies, referring to his three allies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and his army. And 20 says, And the state was taken, and with him the false prophet, referring to the church, that wrought miracles and deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and then that worshipped his image of the queen of heaven. These both, which are beasts, were cast alive into a lake of fire, and 21 says, And those who fell away for the big lies were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the white horse. Plus, earlier I connected the false prophets to the woman called Jezebel, meaning Church of Bel in church I mean, in chapter 2.20. With that said, I'd like to show you additional information that confirms my findings. This slide shows you a pattern what triggered the United States to include the separation of church and state in the United States Constitution, primarily because the Catholic Church commanded his armies, the Holy Roman Empire, from 800 to 1806 to kill those who refused to accept the mark of Rome, or created types of ways that, um, that you could not buy or sell, starting from the Roman Pagan Empire, 63 BC to 325, and the Roman Catholic Ec Ecumenical Councils in 325, and the Roman Byzantine Empire in 330, and the Roman German Holy Empire in 750, uh, 753, and the Roman German Holy Wars called the Crusades in 1095, and the Roman German Inquisition starting in the 1100s, and the Roman German World War I, 1914, and uh, World War II, 1933, and now in 2022, we have the Roman German triggering World War III. And it's easy, the easiest way to confirm these facts is to read history history books, or compare my seven-foot historical comparison chart that shows that the Roman state or church commanded every, um, commanded every major war that we had. And that's why scripture says that the second beast referring to the false Christian church is a stumbling block for those who want to believe as it happened to me until I compared the Bible with history and it all made sense who was trying to, to discourage me from understanding the entire Bible. And this is another famous painting during the First Ecumenical Council, showing the Roman Emperor Constantine I controlling the two branch government system, state and church. Yet, my main, my most concern, what chapter 13, 12 through, through 13 warned us about, that the church exercised the power of the state and did everything in the presence and to deceive or force many to obey. The Roman kingdom, whose deadly wound was healed and revived in 325, and the state do, doeth great wonders, deceived and killed many in the sight of men, referring to the church history. Plus, Daniel 8, 11 to 27 warned us that in the latter days when the sin has reached its fullness, a kingdom shall rise from Rome, who has fierce features, who understands sinister, plot evil and deception, and would take away the laws of God and cast truth to the ground and prosper, referring to twisting the word of God that paved the way to, to revive the image of the beast from the first temple period. So in this slide, I have two questions. Which kingdom twisted and changed God's laws? And who is hindering from knowing the truth? Starting with what happened during the ecumenical councils from 325 to 431. 
In 325, the Council of Nicaea condemned those who questioned the Trinity view that paved the way making Mary the Queen of Heaven and condemned those who rejected the Catholic and Universal Nicaea Creed and replaced the Jewish Passover of sacrifice of the Lamb with the Roman Easter, the resurrection to the Queen of Heaven goddess Ishtar, whose son Bel was resurrected on a Sunday. And in 364, the Council of La 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 Laodicea changed the Sabbath that honored the Jewish God to the Sunday, uh, to Sunday to honor the Roman sun God. And in 431, the Council of Ephesus officially made Mary the mother of God so they could deceive many to worship um, his image or die, which was the first reason why the Eastern Church split from the Western Church, yet per chapter 13, 12 to 17, warned us the ecumenical Christian churches that did everything in the presence of the Roman state. Nevertheless, I have much more of, on this top, topic in my coming soon videos. With that said, I encourage people to read history, and in fact, I discovered is that these three major changes are a pattern to all four beast kingdoms and would kill anyone who did not accept the mark of the beast. Another way to save the new world order. Now I'd like to share the Edict of the People of Constantinople, also called the Edict of Thessalonica, issued in 380 AD by three Roman emperors, making Catholicism the state church of the Roman Empire. And it condemned everyone who did not accept the mark or doctrine of Rome and authorized their punishment. You could not buy or sell, being one of the first Catholic forced conversions or die during church history. Another thing I'd like to share is a letter from the year 494, Pope Galicius to Emperor Anastasius on the superior or uh, superiority of the spiritual over the temporal power. Basically, the Pope, uh, Pope Galicius I confirmed my logic that the two horns is the two branch government system. One, the Roman kingdom by which the world is chiefly ruled by the state, and two, he says, the sacred authority of the priests, referring to the church, is the second branch of the government. Yet, he argued that the royal power of these, that all the priests is the weightier, suggesting the church rules the state. As I explained earlier, that both beasts struggled for, for control during the Holy Roman Empire. Nevertheless, in my coming video on chapter 17, I will clarify that the church rides the beast kingdom. This slide shows part of the ceremony rites used for coronating the Holy Roman Empire emperors. Plus, it is said that it was custom for the state to kiss the Pope's feet. My main point is the Pope crowned and gave the state the blessed sword to protect the Roman Catholic Church that proves she has influenced every major war and that is why it's important to understand Revelation 13, which I encourage people to read this article noted below called The Right of Coronating the Holy Roman Emperor by Nicotrius Papilius. And this is an amazing painting, how the Pope blessed the emperors from the 1200s to the 1823. He would crown and hand him the sword, which I paraphrase, it says, We appoint you as another sword of the Holy See, to protect the Holy Roman Church against the enemies of the faith. Therefore, may your hand remain firm against the enemy as you remove them from the earth. And it goes on and on. Yet the point is, this proves the power of the church that made war with the saints. So as I'm ending my presentation, I'd like to show you this painting illustrating on how popes handed what is called the blessed sword to the state and confirm that at the aftermath, it is a painting on the right side. They killed anyone who would not obey the first and second beast per chapter 13, verse 12 saying, the church exercised the power of the first beast state in his presence to cause force many to worship the first beast state whose deadly wound was healed. 
And in this slide, going back to Revelation 13, 7, it says that the Roman state was granted to make war with the saints. And from, from the 1100s to the 1800s, the Catholic and ecumenical inquisitions built torture chambers all over Europe, including Mexico, torturing people who would not accept the mark of Rome. And this slide shows the Imperia Regala of the Holy Roman Empire and the Church. Currently, it's been protected in Vienna, Austria, at the Hofburg Palace since after World War II, showing the three most important elements, the crown, the sword, and the, ur the orb. However, if you read 1200 years of Imperial Regala, the apparent conclusion would be that the nations that hold the crown and the blessed sword has an obligation to protect the Roman Church. What I understood is that during World War II, Hitler commanded the Imperial Regala at the, Nur uh, the Nuremberg rally in 1938 to display to the Nazi party because it symbolized power plus the divine right to kings and being king of the Romans, claiming the imperial power, but it also had an obligation to protect the Roman church by signing a concordate with the Pope, that it would remove her enemies with the firm hand, precisely what Hitler did during the Holocaust. Nevertheless, my concern about the sword is where it is now. According to this map, it's in the heart of Germany, where last given to Hitler to kill the Jews and Christians who did not accept the mark or image of Rome. And now I believe it's been given to the United Nations to protect the Roman Church, making the second beast more dangerous than the first beast because behind closed doors, the church controls the state, per Revelation 17. Verse 10, referring to the United Nations, which rules 193 countries, per my video, who's the first beast. Also, the second horn dressed in its ministers in Christian churches, and the way to identify them is if they choose not to teach you the warnings of the book of Revelations. And in another presentation, I will show you how I trace, traced it from 800 AD to current. Yet, if we focus on this painting from the First Vatican Council, Pope Pius IX is seated on the throne because they debate it which has more authority, a pope or a ecumenical council, which canon law passed that the pope's infallibility rules over the councils. That implies all ecumenical Christian churches, which explains why they do not warn you that they are crowning the dragon inside the Vatican, making Revelation 13 most clear on who the first and second beast is. With that said, I'd like to remind you that today's presentation clarified who the second beast kingdom is in chapter 13 by using imagery from my charts that conclude that the second beast is the two-horned lamb, false church. On the left side is the first horn, referring to the Catholic Church. And on the right side is the second horn, referring to the ecumenical Christian churches, who rarely teach you about the book of Revelation or who hinder or twist the truth, calling the, first, the false prophet, referring to the priest and the pastors that cause you to trust the United Nations to keep peace on the earth, and deceive you to worship the image of the beast and accept the mark of the beast, which in the next videos I will explain what they are or clarify them. In the meanwhile, please go to my website and request, request a book of Revelation wall chart that will help you understand it by paralleling the events. And I hope you help me reach billions of people by sending this pe presentation to your friends and asking your pastors and rabbis to invite me to your assemblies or conferences to share my scroll charts. With that said, I'd like to end by reminding you that today's presentation was to clarify who the second beast kingdom is, part one. And in the next videos, I will explain the image and the mark of the beast. So I hope you help me reach billions of people by sending this presentation to your friends and asking your pastors and rabbis to invite me to your assemblies or conference to share my scroll charts. Nevertheless, I pray for my... 
I ask you to pray for my ministry that focuses on uniting and preparing people before they build the third temple. That teaches difficult scriptures that some misunderstand or false teachers hinder from knowing the truth. So you won't run worry when these things happen. Still, I'd like to thank you all and please email me questions or post your comments if you want me to make something clear. Plus, if you like this presentation, please, one, give me a like, two, subscribe and get notified of my next videos or schedule events, and three, support my cause so I can build a team to make better videos and I will send you one of my charts on my website. And lastly, I pray God gives you understanding, wisdom, and boldness for the love of God and truth that gives us hope in heaven. God bless.